Okay, so in this video, we are gonna take all of these and we're gonna write them in the completed square form. If you didn't watch the previous video, we explained how to do completing the square with halving the x coefficient and then subtracting this squared, and also explained about sort of the patterns of where it comes from. So check that out if you haven't seen it. Okay, so for this first one to put it into completed square form, I should write all of them with these um, identities, but I'm just gonna write them as equals. It's perfectly fine to do that too. So I'm going to say that I'm going to half the x coefficient and put it into this squared form like this. So it's going to be x plus 4 squared. And then I'm also going to subtract this extra part that I just worked out squared as well. Now, if you're not sure what's going on here, expand this bracket. You'll see that you'd have x squared plus 8x plus 16. And we get rid of that extra 16 by subtracting, by subtracting it. So we get just left with the x squared plus 8x. So this one's going to be pretty similar, apart from instead of it having a plus, it's going to be an x. Make sure you half this, minus 5 squared, and you're always going to subtract the coefficient here. This not the coefficient, this value, always subtract it squared. It's never going to be a plus here, it's always going to be subtract. This one can mix up and change though. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you have fractions or if you have decimals, so I'm going to half the 9, and actually I'd prefer you to write this as 9 over 2 rather than 4.5, 4 so I'm going to write it as 9 over 2 like this. Now the reason I'd rather you do this is because it's actually a bit tricky to square 4.5, you'd have to get a calculator or do 4.5 multiplied by 4.5 manually, and actually this is super easy because you can just subtract 9 over 2 squared. Now 9 over 2 squared, you can do the 9 squared, which is 81, and the 2 squared, which is 4 and that's perfectly easy, that's perfectly fine to leave it in that form. Again, for this one here, I'm going to half that so it becomes minus 5 over 2 squared. Remember, you're going to subtract that thing that we've just done squared, so it's going to be subtracting 25 over 4. You can just square the 5 and the 2, and it's always going to, um, you're always subtracting something that's positive because you're squaring something that's negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So these ones over here, they've all got this like extra part at the end. And so we're going to figure out how we deal with that with this first example here. So I'm going to begin by just completing the square on this part, and then we'll deal with that plus five afterwards. Well, we've actually completed it over here. So I'm just going to write it out again. We've completed the square on that beginning part. We're going to half it so that instead of an 8x, it becomes a 4. And then I'm going to subtract the 16. Now, look, we've actually just got this extra plus 5, so I'm just going to leave that to hang out at the end like this. So this part was the thing I did the completing the square on. The plus 5 didn't interact at all. So all I need to do now is the minus 16 plus 5, which is just minus 11. So we've got it in the completed square form. This one, I'm going to half the 6 to get the 3. So I get x plus 3 squared, and I'm going to subtract the 3 squared, which is 9. So I've just done it to this part here. And that's this part here. But don't forget, there's also the minus 3 that we had before. So our answer for this is going to be x plus 3 squared minus 9 minus 3, which is minus 12. Okay, so this one that we're going to have just may have some fractional type things in this. I'm going to complete the square just on the beginning part that we have. So that's going to be our x minus 3 over 2 squared. And then we're going to be subtracting this thing squared. So we're going to subtract 9 over 4. Remember though, there's also this plus 1, so we've just completed the square on that beginning part, so we're going to plus 1. So this is going to be x minus 3 over 2 squared, and this is minus 9 over 4 plus 1. Well remember, 1 is just 4 over 4, so it's minus 9 over 4 plus 4 over 4, that is just going to be minus 5 over 4. And of course you can check any of these things on a calculator if you need to as well. So we're going to complete the square on this beginning part here. So it's going to be x minus, well, we'll do half of 4 over 7. Well, rather than thinking of any rules with fractions, you've got 4 sevenths. Half of 4 sevenths must be 2 sevenths. So we're going to subtract the 2 over 7 squared there. And then we also need to subtract the 2 over 7 squared, which is going to be the 2 squared is 4 and the 7 squared is 49. So you're subtracting minus 4 over 49. And then afterwards, we've done that part there, you still need to add on the 1 over 7. Now, we just need to deal with these with a common denominator. So instead of 1 over 7, you could just think of this, multiplying the top and bottom by 7, as 7 over 49. So trying to squeeze it all on this one page, you could take up another line. It's x minus 2 over 7 squared. You've got minus 4 over 49 plus 7 over 49. That is going to be plus 3 over 49 now that you've got that common denominator. 
So I have got on the next page eight questions that are very similar to these ones that I want you to have a go at. And then we're going to try something where the form slightly changes and we have an A at the beginning. So if you need to look at these ones, we'll write them down. You've got them here and then you've got these ones. All, obviously, all of these PDFs are available in my Google Drive that are linked as well. So have a go at these eight questions. Pause the video here and I'm very quickly going to go through these answers. OK, so for this first one, nice and speedy here, we're going to half the 12 to get the 6 and we're going to subtract the 6 squared, which is 36. This one, we're going to half the minus 4 to get minus 2 and I'm going to subtract the 2 squared, which is 4. I'm going to subtract the 7 here. Sorry, I'm going to half the 7, so I get minus 7 over 2. And I'm going to subtract that squared. 7 squared is 49 and 2 squared is 4. Now this one, although you can't see it, this is a coefficient of 1. So I'm going to do x subtract 1 divided by 2, which is just a half. And then from that, I'm going to subtract a half squared. Well, the 1 times the 1 is 1 and the 2 times the 2 is 4. So a half squared is a quarter. These ones, I'm just going to complete the square on the beginning part first of all. So that's going to be my x plus 3 squared minus 9. And then at the end, there's the extra plus 2. So it's going to be x plus 3 squared minus 7. I'm going to complete the square on just the beginning two terms. So that's going to be my x plus 7 squared minus 49. And then there's still that minus 10. So it's x plus 7 squared minus 59. Just going to complete the square on the beginning two terms. So that's x minus 5 over 2 squared minus 25 over 4 plus 3. Now remember 3 is just going to be the same as 12 over 4. So that's going to be x minus 5 over 2 squared. And then we've got minus 25 plus 12. So that's going to be minus 13 over 4. And then the last one, completing the square on that beginning part, we need to do a half of three fifths. Well, three fifths divided by two or a half of three fifths is going to be three tenths. So it's going to be x minus three tenths squared minus the nine over a hundred, because that's three over ten squared, plus a fifth. Now, a fifth over a hundred, well, let's just write it like this. A fifth is going to be 20 over 100 times in the top and bottom by 20. So we get x minus 3 over 10 squared. You've got minus 9 over 100 plus 20 over 100. That is plus 11 over 100. You will notice for all of my answers on this page and on this page here, I have always used fractions. I don't really like using decimals when you get to this level of algebra. So try and get comfortable using fractions because it's going to be the best thing, especially if you're planning to go and do A-level maths as well. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.